couple we have items to go through because it's been a while so uh, housekeeping there's some community events we have representatives from ASWWU here so they'll be uh, called up and they're going to give a presentation uh, uh, event concept they're thinking uh, and then we have a couple of action items and reports uh, so the first is to dive right into community events so things that are going uh, on is we have State of the City March 27th. Uh, so that's the meeting where uh, Harvey uh, Crowther, he gives a state of things going on here in the city. Uh, so they'll be prior to city council on uh, Tuesday, March 27th at 6 p.m. And then we'll simulcast it again like last year on uh, Facebook. So, because we shoot it live. Uh, Memorial Day, that event is still on and we're taking registrations for the parade. Uh, that'll be Monday, May 28th at 11 a.m. And the idea is they have a parade between 10th and then uh, Whitman and then a food truck deal over at Kiwanis Park thereafter. Uh, believe it or not, the farmer's market's starting to come up shortly. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, hard already? to believe. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, in, we're in the middle of interviewing uh, the farmers market coordinator. We'll have them on board soon. Uh, but uh, that's going to be going on Thursdays from May 31st to September 27th uh, from 4 to 7 p.m. And we're already at about like 20 vendors already. Sweet. So it, it's going. That's awesome. And then uh, I've, su I've sung out some solicitations for uh, fireworks support, but uh, independence, our Independence Day event, that will be Sunday, July 1st from 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, already got a $1,000 toward it from businesses, so that's cool. So we need a little bit more money, then we'll be good. So uh, those are the events coming up that the city is acting lead on. Uh, now the event concept that we're all turning over to uh, folks from ASWWU is they're, they're thinking of uh, partnering with the city for a block party concept. We have a new youth advisory commission and one of the concepts that they uh, were really pushing to try out was to have more events in partnership uh, with the students uh, essentially as the uh, quarter ends and then potentially as the quarter begins. So. Uh, I had some uh, outreach to the city uh, where it sounded like they were open to working with the city on an event uh, in May. Uh, so with that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How's it going? Hi. Good. Oh, good. Yeah, thanks for coming. Well, thank you. Um, so my name is Timothy Pasaka and I'm the social vice president at Walla Walla University Student Association, which is ASWWU, kind of called ASWU. And, you know, we're um, planning block party for Sunday, May 20th, which is going to be an event on College Avenue from Whitman Street all the way down to Whitman Street all the way up to um, Fork. And so we're working with the city, you know, to close the road. And kind of like, you know, I've always loved like the small town feel that we have here in College Place and kind of want to create that experience where our university students and members of this community can kind of join together and have a fun afternoon. And so we're planning to have over 100 booths wow. representing uh, the different departments on our campus. Like from, we have 47 student clubs. Our um, student association has 14 departments. And then we have the various university departments. So we're going to be working with them. And we are going to be working with the Youth Advisory Council that um, Mike and the mayor have uh, work with the different schools to kind of have features from the different uh, elementary and middle schools, uh, both public and private. And then uh, beyond that, we want to really get business involvement so that uh, businesses can reach you know, new target, target groups. Like uh, There's going to be a lot of families, and so that means there will be parents, and they'll bring their neighbors. It will be good, a good way to reach uh, new, new groups of clients as well as um, to make money. You know, you can sell like a special product in candies or I'm not sure which businesses you guys 
own, I know you guys all, all right. own great businesses. Um, and so, yeah, we're just really excited to be partnering with the city on this and to be able to do an event that will kind of unite our students with the families. And so, um, this is Natalie and this is Savannah. And Savannah is directing the event, and Natalie's my director of external relations. And so she's going to kind of share a little bit about the event, and then she'll share how you can get involved if you, if you guys are interested. Thanks, Sam. Um, so, like, as you've been talking about, like, I am the event director for this particular event, um, and it's my honor to kind of put this on for the community, and I would really like for this um, event to bring the community closer, not only with the, um, the businesses in the community, but the families and the students that we have here. Um, our vision for Block Party is to have, like, all these activities for, like, um, all ages. So, um, the strongest, like, tactic that we believe to have is um, when you bring parents in, then you bring kids in. So, we're having activities like a lot of activities set for kids, like we'll be providing bouncy houses, um, mini pools, and like carnival style games. We'll also have sports and games for teens and college students, and we'll be giving giveaways um, for all ages. Um, <laughs> we'll have booths from like the various clubs and departments at our school, and we will <laughs> have fun and educational activities geared to guests. Um, the event will run from 4 to 7 p.m., and it'll take us right through the afternoon into dinner. Uh, as Natalie will share, this is a perfect opportunity for businesses to expand for you guys to get a new clientele. So, thank you. And um, thank you guys for having us be here. Um, I'm the Director of External Relations for ASU, and building off of what Tim and Savannah have both said, a portion of the activities we are putting on are geared towards kids um, in order to get the entire family out for this fun event. Um, and as the kids are enjoying the various games, contests, and inflatables sponsored by our departments, parents can be excited to shop through the new household gifts, items, um, clothes, and more from all of the businesses that we are going to sponsor. And as the afternoon progresses, college students and families will get hungry, so of course they're going to go want to get a bite to eat from all the restaurants um, that are going to be there. And as you think about your business and organization and how to be part of this event, um, I just want to help you make sure the block. Each side of College Avenue will have booths lined uh, from the end to end. And food trucks will pull the ends of the roads, and a stage will sit on the top of the hill in the middle of the, of the road. Vendors can select a single booth, which is 10 by 10, or a double booth, which is 10 by 20. When you host a booth, you're gaining your business or organization a free spot at a major, major community event. And you are helping your brand to reach hundreds of new potential clients, and you are making money throughout the event. And better than that, uh, you are making a difference in your community, bringing residents together as we celebrate the culture of our valley. Uh, but what's the catch? Um, College Avenue is only 1,000 feet long. And once it's full, it'll be too late to join the party. So <laughs> I would suggest um, joining as soon as possible. And um, yeah, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know. Um, I have business cards that I'll give to all of you guys. And you can email me. Or call. Okay. Are there any Sounds questions like, like Right yeah. Now that you guys might have? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Is there a charge to the families um, to come to this event? It's not. Yeah. Everything okay. is free. We're we're sponsoring the event and we're okay. the city, and there would also not be a charge for businesses to be involved. So oh, that was my of, next yeah, question. It's all about just creating this inclusive community. Yeah. So it's literally okay. just a promotion spot for our business to make money and not have to like pay a commission. Yeah. So, and you're you're setting it all up along College Avenue mm -hmm. on both sides yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. College Avenue, I believe, is 32 feet wide, yeah. um, and so we would have we would either side with an open walk in the middle. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's so right on the road there. Right on the road. Okay. Yeah. Sidewalks. Yeah. And, and are uh -huh. are you providing the tables, or uh, or are we to provide that? We type can of? provide up to like 70 tables. So it's going to be a first come first serve based on tables, and okay. then beyond that, we're going to ask if a business does have their own tables and they provide that. Like some could provide their own tent if they want to do that. So it's really up to what you guys want to do. But you'll, have, but you'll have size restrictions. The risk, yeah, so it needs the depth cannot be more than 10 feet okay. because we have to keep that walkway. Right. And we prefer that it's 10 feet so that it's all kind of equal, even. Uniform. You know, yeah, it's uniform. But for the width, um, we'd like to keep it between 10 and 20 so that one yeah. one uh, business isn't taking like right you know, yeah. half a block yeah, half a block. yeah. Like, Andy's could put their own market out there and then, yeah, <laughs> and that would be like <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Bins and do you know how many booths you'll have I mean you said a hundred yes so a hundred would include clubs and departments as well okay 
Um, but we're hoping for you know 30 to 40 vendor type of booths. Okay. And we're going to be reaching out to Walla Walla businesses as well. Mm -hmm. But we want to start with College Place so you guys get the, the first choice in which spot in the road you want and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how are you getting the word out to the community? Um, so we have a marketing department who is creating posters which will also turn into flyers. And that's kind of internally for our clients as well as for like our different, you know, we have, we're associated with like Wava and Rogers and all that. So that would internally help us there. And then we're also going to be sharing those, that media, those media with the city and we'll kind of distribute it to you guys as well. Yeah, so we can uh, so you'll have paper, paper flyers. We're also going to have events, the event list on Facebook and Instagram. So we'll have an event page on Facebook for ASU. So the ASU Facebook page will have that. And we'll use you know, our Instagram page to share stories on there to kind of just get that target market through that. Um, and then beyond that, we'll be working um, just to get it in the different public places around town. Really know about it. And a lot of it's really word of mouth. Um, like I know that when we get it to our different schools in our in our, in our city, that's going to already get hundreds of people talking about it. And our, our goal is to get close to a thousand people out to this event uh, from College Place, Walla Walla, and that's a good goal. It's a great idea, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's awesome. And I'd like to definitely be part of it. How how do we go about signing up and all of that? So you would work with her. She's director of external relations, so she okay. oversees all of that. It's her cards coming. Did you get a card? Yeah, so oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you Sorry. can send her an email <laughs> just to kind of introduce yourself. Like, okay. I'm, I'm curious, what businesses do you guys represent? Yeah. I'm Rogers Bakery. Oh, okay, oh. wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I come there all the time too. Yeah, I love the um, Cuban shop as well. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm with the Walla Walla Chamber of Commerce. Oh, okay. so not a business specifically, okay. but I will reach out to you because okay. we will promote this through oh, our chamber fantastic. membership list. Okay. Both, we can help you recruit vendors and generate nice. attendance. So. I would be yeah. the special thing for you right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so, I'm sure we'll, we'll be in too. Yeah. I remember interviewing you for a class project, my first. That's where I recognize you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I love and you know, we got Andy's community board, so we uh -huh. can promote there at the store as well. That's so, wonderful. Thank you. It's a good, good being you to get the word out. So. Thank you. Do you have any um, marketing materials worked up yet? Not yet. So okay. our team. Is working on that over the next week yeah. and break. Okay. So they're going to be working on that over spring break. Like right, right now we're in finals week, and yeah. so it's kind of. So I'll I'll reach out to you, okay. give you my contact information as soon as you have that stuff. Yeah, I can fire it my it way, and we'll yeah we'll talk soon. Yeah. Yeah. Great guys. Great. Yeah, Who came up with the idea? Block party. Well, it's a it's a group. It's a group. We have a yeah. ten twenty that makes the social team. We talk about a lot of. Great idea. Keep yeah. those community ideas coming. Yeah. yeah. Yes. This is our sponsor. Sorry. Hi, hey, sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much. Right. Well, thank you so much. 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 Thank you well, one of the class projects is they send the kids over and <laughs> sure. they, they build me questions about all kinds of stuff about business. <laughs> well, <laughs> late, later on in the agenda, when we get to action items, there'll be a part where uh, we basically need a recommendation from the board uh, for a fi financial impact on that because there's some overtime costs associated for police, but we found the money to cover it. But we, since you're the events commission, we need an official uh, nod for that so we'll get to that a little later on though okay. uh I, I to keep going we'll go through other ho housekeeping items uh number three is this opportunity zone uh this is actually a brand new concept that only came on my radar last week so i'm trying to 
turn in the application and get it going. So I've mentioned at previous uh, meetings in the past that one of the issues with economic development in the state is the fact that you can't do tax increment financing or enterprise zones or do incentives. Uh, however, uh, with the federal government, they've actually done something that changes that a little bit. So as part of the, that Tax Cuts and uh, Jobs Act that uh, uh, went through a couple months back, there's actually a provision in there where it gives uh, states the ability to create what's called opportunity zones. And if you're in a low-income census block group, you basically fill out the application to the State Department of Commerce, and then if the State Department of Commerce agrees and they certify you uh, as an opportunity zone, if there's new businesses or businesses are expanding or investing money in the set opportunity zone, uh, you get to defer or waive uh, capital gains taxes or, uh, or investment taxes uh, at the federal level. So, it's, so it basically helps on your income tax return. Uh, I was just made aware this last week and much like anything else that uh, touches the feds it was associated with about the 18 page uh, application so mm -hmm. uh, I'm filling that out as we speak because it's competitive uh, luckily the census uh, track that qualifies for this actually takes in a good majority of college place uh, so it basically is bounded by Myra Road on the east Davison Academy Way on the west, Electric Avenue on the north, and then Lamperty on the south. So uh, if we get it, that'll actually be a bit of a game changer because we're, we'll basically be an incentivized area, uh, which in this state does not usually happen. So I'm trying to write a good application yeah. for it. <laughs> So, any further questions on that? The, it just came up last week, so uh, I've done as much research as I could in the limited time. Unfortunately, it's due next week already, so. So, a nomination has to come from the city, or as it says, town, or yeah. tribe, or county, not yeah. Individual property owners. No, right. so no, so it comes from the city, and it basically creates an entire geographic area. Uh -huh. So if if the state certifies us as an opportunity zone, there's no cap to it. So if someone's investing uh, in a business, whether it be up along College Avenue near where Rogers Bakery is at, or over where Andy's is at, or along the Myra Road corridor, uh, they could participate. Uh, the area does not cover, but I'm not overly concerned because they seem to have enough monies. Walmart. <laughs> uh, the area south of Lamperty, if you look, that's not in a low-income census tract, so they could not participate the whole Meadowbrook area, uh, but everything else is fair game if yeah, we the get this. Is essentially <clears throat> everything. Well, well, that green area, so you can't yeah. really see it because the lights, because the line is pretty dim. Uh, but we have a different census tract from Walla Walla, so I know they're putting in for it as well. Uh, but all of them, all of them have the ability to qualify for it. It'll be up to the Department of Commerce uh, to say truly who does or who doesn't. Because on the State Department of Commerce side, they do have a cap. Now the way they have federal legislation. Of the census tracts that qualify, only 25% of them can get this. So it's going to be very competitive. Mm, like so it, if you are in that 25% that gets awarded this opportunity zone status? Well, well, we'll see. So yeah. we'll, we'll see because we're in the census tracts that... I, are even allowed to apply right, for this. So, yeah. And of those that are allowed to, uh, the Department of Commerce can basically only uh, turn in about 25% of the eligible census tracts. So 25% will receive that status or 25% will be eligible? Uh, will receive that yeah, status, okay. yeah. So let's say College Place does yeah. get it. What's the next step? Is that becomes a so it becomes a recruiting 
it, be, it, it becomes a significant yeah. retu- recruiting tool uh, because then we're able to basically defer capital gains uh-huh. and uh, investment. So, right, yeah, right. taxes. So yeah. that's a major game changer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to think, man. How does the conversation go? Yeah. With the uh, coming in or whatever? Yeah, I mean, with Department of Commerce, to be frank, I'm not even really sure that they're aware of the full process because they sent out a, e- a pretty panicky email last week where it was like, oh, by the way, we have this competitive program. Here's the 18-page application. Fill it out. And it all happened pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, and that was pretty much the warning. <laughs> so. <Yeah. laughs> so there's investments in low-income tracks. Yeah. What does that really mean, just new, new businesses and saving taxes? And- yeah, yeah. The, pr- pretty much what that mean, what low income tracks are is every year the U- U.S. Census does what's called the American Community Survey, and they do a random sample of basically what folks' income is. And then if you're basically below the median income, about like eighty, about eighty percent of the median income, then that's considered like low income. So in our case, the census tract uh, that comprises most of Central and North College Place uh, fits that. Yeah. yeah. And most of Walla Walla fits it, as you could see in the map. It, uh, the only area that really is not covered by this is like the uh, when you go further south, like down Plaza Way and mm-hmm. that area by the golf course. South, yeah. yeah. By the high school yeah. and all that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, do you know when you'd find out? You know, things do like a they didn't, and a half. That's the crazy thing. They didn't say when we would know. It just said <laughs> yeah. turn it in uh-huh. uh, by March 26. I have no idea, and I don't think they have an idea. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to update you all on that. You uh, said Walla Walla is doing it? Are they involved? They, 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 are, they are doing it as well uh, because there's a, essentially two ways of doing this, which is a little irritating because it's like double the amount of work but we need to do what we can to get this so a certain amount of census tracts are uh, delegated to uh, basically first come first serve and and if they think you made a good argument there's another group of census tracts although this is a very little number uh, but where it says that like if your area development agency recommends a census tract or two uh, that you may have the ability to get it that way as well so basically what's happening is that we are turning an application with the port of the wall Walla Walla uh, with the city of Walla Walla that's one way to get the ADO if if we were deemed to get one of those tracks but if we don't get that then the other way is to turn it in individually so we're basically playing both sides of the fence to see if one sticks yeah Yeah. but that means double amount of work because the applications for both are different yeah so (laughs) like you said it's not short no no, so just be aware that that's uh, going on. So, so we'll see if we get it. Uh, the other thing I uh, turned into you uh, on the housekeeping section for item three, and there is that uh, definition of engaging in business. So take a look at that and let me know if you have any questions or edits to it. And there'll be more. There'll be additional information coming your way. So what has happened is that over the years. Uh, multiple municipalities have uh, created like business license ordinances and then the state has a business license ordinance too and none of them jive up with each other well in uh, 2017 there was a bill that passed uh, the both the house and the senate and then it was signed by the governor and what it said is that the association of washington cities had to convene a work group and basically develop like a model business license ordinance and then it compels all the cities to adopt it in 2019. so it's coming out in like little drips what this 
thing is going to look like. Uh, but ultimately, they're wanting all cities to pass uh, basically this standard model business license ordinance. And then we're either the business licensing is done through the state system or this program called File Local. Uh, we've already done our business licensing through the state system, so luckily we're ahead of the game there. Uh, the only thing is, is this model ordinance. We really don't know what's in it yet. I'm on the work group, so there's a lot of battles back and forth on this because you have the small cities, but then you also have the Tacomas and Federal Ways who want to make this thing confusing, so there's a little tug of war afoot here. Uh, but what's happening is uh, they've come up with a definition for this engaging in business. So read it over. Let me know if you have any thoughts to it. And I'm expecting as the months progress here, we're going to get more and more of this ordinance sent our way because uh, per that bill that passed the legislature, this thing must be entirely like signed off and a done deal by the end of this year. Is it a new business license fee or is it just a uniform it's uniform it's, it's it's not a standardizing new fee. the form Bingo. itself yeah yeah, okay. yeah it's just standardizing it the the thing that we're trying to be cautious of is if you hear the west side cities talk they're trying to mix in to the business license ordinance ordinance standard language for business and occupation tax and the discussion we're having is that's not a thing on this side of the mountain so don't do that because uh, that's because basically that's an additional taxation mechanism separate from business license fees and no one over here does that that's more of like a i5 seattle vancouver well, it's a thing. tax it's yeah not a license fee. Well, and that's what we've yeah. been trying to tell yeah. them because they're trying they're trying to mix both of them together, and it's not a mixable thing. Yeah. So, pretty much whenever the West Side touches this stuff, it gets confusing. So that's what's manifesting here. So read the definition carefully, and over the next month or so, if you have any thoughts for edits, because I'm on the board that's trying to work this out. Let me know and I can convey that and see if we can get changes on this. Um, okay, if there's no question on that, I'll move to the next item. This is just updating everyone. Our, the tourism booklet came out, so Ariada was in there for the uh, City of College Place. That was the first time we actually showed up in the Valley Tourism booklet, so that was good. So we're up to th about three pages in that. So that's what two of them look like up there. Oh, yeah, I remember the pictures that you used. Yeah. yeah. What was the third page? The, the third page has ads on it, so it has uh, Rogers Bakery, oh, okay, Black right. yeah. Cup, yeah. I gotcha. Yep. The ad section. Yeah, so it turned out good. It's nice. Yeah, and, and then they okay. adjusted the front cover, too, so it says College Place now mm -hmm. on it. So. Do you guys get a, a supply of those visitor's guides? I've yeah. asked for them. Okay. I've not gotten any yet. Yeah. I need to come by I've got, yeah. we've got some. Oh, if you yeah. got some, I need them. We got so. a pallet, so. Oh. Okay, nice. well, send me some of the pallets I can some. get I, yeah, up here. I, yeah, <laughs> I'd like to have some, okay. too. Yeah, that'd I'll be make great. I'll a little trip. Great. Fill up my truck. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you I guys, also. Do you guys want to just <laughs> hand them out? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. any questions on that? Okay, uh, next one I just wanted to update everyone on because this is a big project and it's coming up very soon here because uh, we just uh, issued the uh, request for bid on this it is 4th and Academy way, uh, way so everyone's aware of it. Uh, the city received a grant for uh, $1.3 million from the state. Uh, and we're actually going to go to construction this summer on it. Uh, so what this entails is basically completely rebuilding 4th Street from Davis to Academy Way, and then Academy Way from 4th all the way to Whitman. And it's going to be new pavement, sidewalks, and then a cycle track, which is basically uh, bike lanes. Nice. Uh, so so that and new pavement so the idea here is that we're we basically have the request for bid out right now 
we'll get the bids probably in about three weeks or so and then make a selection and then uh, start on this uh, when school lets out. Um, as we saw with the College Avenue project, I, I can't guarantee that it's going to be wrapped up by the time school starts, but we'll hope. <laughs> so, because we've urged them that once we tell you a go, go, but yeah. telling them and them doing it's a whole nother thing. So, uh, but this is a big project. This is going to be phase one. Uh, phase two, uh, we're actually uh, getting grant funds for for next year. And what phase two will entail is basically rebuilding 4th Street from Davis up to College Avenue. And then the pedestrian lights that are out here on College Avenue, we would actually put those in along 4th and Academy Way and put ped lights the whole way. Uh, but that, that part will be next year. This year is just reconstructing the part from Davis over to Whitman. So, any questions or thoughts on that? I just want to make sure everyone's aware of that because when we get going on that, that's going to be a fairly uh, big undertaking. Okay. Okay, now we're into the action item uh, section. And this uh, goes back to the event that uh, the ASWU pre presented. Uh, so uh, what they requested is that the city assist with uh, police blocking off the streets. Uh, because it is a main street per our public safety protocol, uh, we really require one officer at 4th and uh, College and one at Whitman and uh, College just because the amount of traffic. Uh, so when you take when you take everything into account, because the way our staffing is, it requires overtime. It isn't like we can pull regular patrol onto this. Uh, it ends up being about six hundred dollars uh, because they need to be there blocking it off the entire time the event's going on, plus set up and take down. Uh, so in our overtime budget, we can accommodate this. However, since it wasn't like explicitly stated in budget time and this is uh, the events commission within like the authority of things uh, this commission has the ability to say yay or nay on it and then the mayor and I can act accordingly so what we are asking is basically for a vote on if you are comfortable with allocating the 600 for the uh, police uh, overtime coverage for those two intersections to shut it down okay yeah Okay, well, I need a formal, like, a motion in a second. Well, I, I certainly move that we accommodate this and then cover the overtime costs. I second that. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. I will make sure that's taken into account then, and we'll get we'll get plans going. Uh, item number 4.02. Uh, this is something that we've worked on. I actually looked at the calendar. It goes back a year now. Uh, the economic development element of the comprehensive plan. Uh, so I'll just give a little background and where we stand on things now. So uh, College Place lacked the economic development section in its comprehensive plan. Uh, currently we're in the middle of an update for the whole comprehensive plan. And as such, uh, we thought now was the time to include the set element uh, in the comp plan as it spells where we need to go for the next two decades. And uh, really we've worked on this project over uh, the last many meetings, uh, really since the commission's been in existence for the past year. Uh, so where we're at on this is we've had extensive uh, public process. We've uh, talked about uh, the creation of the various sections of this at the monthly EdTech meetings. We uh, did the survey, uh, which had quite a few responses, and then we did a public, uh, big public workshop in February uh, for the entire comprehensive plan, including the economic development section and then other sections of it. In uh, the sections of this plan is we have baseline data, a survey, uh, the SWOT analysis, which is strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats, and then goals and objectives and policies. Uh, and we've been refining that over the last couple of meetings. So uh, really, uh, what 
but I'm asking is if there's any further edits to it, uh, let me know. Otherwise, it would be really helpful to have a motion to recommend this thing to Planning Commission and City Council uh, because we need to allow enough time to, for it to now go through the Planning Commission process and then ultimately Council because uh, we're under the wire to get the entire comp plan done by the end of June. tabulate some of that that took place over there at uh, what people liked and didn't yeah. like over there. Uh, I, I mean, as far as far as what as far as what folks liked and didn't like during the comprehensive plan open house, uh, a lot a lot of that stuff uh, really had to do uh, with uh, some land use elements. Uh, no, it, it was an economic development, and then the most uh, contentious issue uh, really wasn't as. Uh, as much about economic development, it's more so a provision of city services, which is the whole library issue, oh, yeah. uh, which, yeah. which that's still a fascinating one because uh, the sur we had a survey that was conducted on foot by university students at the university, and the on foot survey indicated the folks wanted the library. And then the folks who came up to the, the open house were exactly the opposite way. Uh, so it's it's very much a contentious issue. Uh, we're going to talk about the library thing at a future city council meeting. What I believe is going to happen to put this for rest once and for all is when the property taxes go down next year, I think we may run uh, just to see what happens uh, if people truly want a library to pay for it because we don't have that kind of money just sitting around in a warehouse and if they want it then they'll get it if they don't want it folks won't get it because we don't have the money for it so uh, but the thing is we've been trying to get answer one way or another and it's very it's very divided even when we did the library card program like for instance if we would still have money sitting around I would tell you that I wouldn't think that it was a good topic to deal with. However, when we did that library card program, uh, we actually uh, ran out the money for library cards in three hours on the first day. So, yeah, really? So, yeah. So yeah. it's it's such a it's such a there, it's huh? such a split Blood. piece of subject matter. I the only way I could think of finally end this thing one way or another is to have a vote and just see what happens uh, because we're getting angry people on both sides where it's like oh you're horrible uh, because you're the biggest city in the state without library services which is actually true uh, we are the biggest one without any and I'm not saying library service as in uh, lib there's no library in the city I'm saying that doesn't have a contract or uh, cover cards or anything we are the biggest uh, but then there's other people uh, where they have affiliation with other groups or the means to pay for it. It's like, well, why would you make me pay for a library card? So it, it's loud on both sides, so it's hard to make heads or tails of it. That's a little bit removed from this plan part, but I just wanted to add some context to it because that was the thing I heard loud and... Uh, that was the thing that shocked me at the open house because at the sur when we when the students did the surveys and that was legitimately a random sample because they actually divvied the city up in four quadrants and they just hit random homes. Uh, it came out well. You need to do a library, and then when we did the open house, it was like no, you don't. So. Hmm. I'm confused. People. Yeah. 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 People yeah. Confusing. Well, I'm personally comfortable where we got started on all this. What do you guys think? Yeah. Spent time. I looked at this. Yeah, I looked through. <clears throat> yeah, if you're comfortable, I just need a, a motion in a second, and then the vote, and then planning and commission could start their process.
Okay. Well, Aye. Okay. I have to be very picky with this one because plans go through uh, growth management and if you don't do the vote exactly yeah. right, yeah. someone can contest it. Yeah. Growth management in this state, by the way, is a pain, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, because in other states, uh, what you do as far as planning is you, what you can actually do is you draw like a mile and a half buffer around the uh, edges of your community and any of that's like fair game. And in this state though, uh, every county they have to allocate what's called like urban growth boundary and like reserves. And you have to go through this like insane process proving that like you need certain properties. But that's only contingent if the property owner wants to play with you. But the crazy thing is if they don't, and let's say the county says, well, I think you should go out there anyway, they could add that into the UGA and then you're just stuck. It's a, yeah, it's a very crazy process. <laughs> uh, section 5 1, I was just curious thoughts on this because I think this is, uh, and, and this is just under reports here. Uh, and this is a project from a while back, uh, College Avenue design standards. So what this is, is if you look at the old comprehensive plan, the thought over time was really to be working on making College Avenue, you know, your standard walkable, mixed use, downtown type uh, street. Uh, and what design standards do is it doesn't penalize businesses that are already there. What it is, is that if you're getting new development, it basically presents like a menu of options from which they can pick to design their buildings. So uh, encouraging, you know, that it's like built up near the sidewalk and that parking would be on the rear or on the street. Uh, and just really encouraging like public plazas, walkability, things like that. Uh, this project project is going on a long time. Uh, we started doing workshop, public workshops on this actually last March I looked and then it, and then uh, it died off for a little bit because we decided to deal with this the same time as the comprehensive plan since it's a land use issue. It just makes sense to merge everything uh, together. But there were multiple workshops. The city council received a presentation. Uh, this was a collaboration uh, between uh, Washington State University University. They have this uh, program called Rural Community Design Initiative where they uh, do placemaking efforts and uh, ways to essentially uh, figure out how to plan for a future your community. And then Walla Walla University was involved in this as well. Uh, so as we're going along a future here, uh, this is another thing where we really want this as like an addenda to uh, the comprehensive plan, because if we really want College Avenue to be that kind of mixed use corridor, that kind of stuff unfortunately doesn't happen. It's like only if you don't have a framework from which to work under. And while there is one drawing out office, it's like, oh, hey, we would like to do this. There was nothing as far as how to get there. And this accomplishes the how to get there piece. This is only for businesses on College Avenue? Yeah, yeah, b between uh, Rose and 13th Street. Yeah because that's where the wider sidewalks are. I love the way it looks, and I've any communities I've seen that have done this, look, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As there, was there any discussion on kind of the, you know, because it strikes me, not that I'm an expert in this stuff, but in, in spaces that are in really high demand, this mm. would be a no-brainer yeah. that you want to control what your town ends up looking like. Mm -hmm. um, is there, was there any discussion on the impact on recruiting business under these guidelines? Does it negatively yeah. or positively impact? Is it, is it attractive to businesses to come in with this sort of guideline framework to where they're going to put their business? Or well, well that, that was definitely discussed at length because our CDI was involved in doing uh, almost identical design uh, standards for Dayton because uh -huh. Dayton has nearly identical ones and that's why when you go on their main street it looks like it does because yeah. as stuff has been developed and going in there they've been going according to this framework. Uh, likewise when I was in Colfax uh, our CDI uh, they did the design regulations over there because actually 
actually a guy who did was the chair of the Historic Preservation Commission in Colfax, uh, and the stuff is starting to sprout up there now because there's actually uh, like a vision. Mm -hmm. Because that was the problem in Colfax, there wasn't anything written, so people were putting up just hideous stuff, and it re really made it look bad. And Kelly and I went on in church activity. We just love to have that one in the corner across the goofy turn right next door to our stores. Yeah. Which one? That one with all the signs all over and stuff, just oh. north of the, wouldn't you like to have them as neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but as you can see, I like put up the document here. It just has a little mock ups of what you can do even with the existing housing, where a lot of folks don't get the fact that within our zoning designation, just because it's a house doesn't mean that you can't have retail in it. Our zoning allows for the fact that if you want to have retail on the bottom floor and live upstairs or do some sort of live work type arrangement, you can do that. And this drawing here, I forget the address, but it was actually based on a house that's on College Avenue. And Bob Crick acted a sketch of what it would look like if it had like a business on the first floor. Uh, so that's really what this is suggesting. Uh, this drawing here, and this gets back to my whole point that uh, we were thinking this way years ago, but there wasn't a pathway forward, so just like sat there. That drawing that you see on the upper left actually was from over 10 years ago. Uh, there was a college place comprehensive plan 10 years ago, and the idea was to turn it into that, but that's as far as it went. It was just like, oh, that looks nice, but then it ended. Uh, so this helps achieve that, and it, it just gives options. They, they show what uh, certain buildings look like in other cities that have done this treatment, and that lists characteristics. And then it tells you what like each part of the building <coughs> is, and it gives you definitions on that. Is there anything in existence that violates these right now that you'd have mm. to deal with or grandfather in or anything? Well, I mean, with this kind of stuff, you don't re you you don't really uh, you don't really apply it on, on like current buildings. This is uh, the only way that you end up changing it is like if it's like a little bit of a change of use, for instance. Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, let's say if one of the homes was knocked down and a new building was built, then it's we want you to abide by this. But right. if you if you're merely living in your house and you're in that mixed use zone and does Designation, and then you want to convert it where the bottom is retailing upstairs is live space, go for it because that's what our zoning allows. So existing things are grandfathered. This is just this is just making sure what we get in here uh, starts fitting with this aesthetic because uh, I think the danger that we run into, especially since Walla Walla is starting to take off so much with the wine industry, is maybe how should I say this? Auto oriented businesses that may have went to Walla Walla are maybe starting to look this way because it's a cheaper cost to do in business, which if you're out on Myra Road or State Route 125 is great, but the danger is is that if stuff on College Avenue gets developed, if you start putting like big holes with big parking lots and it, people aren't gonna walk, uh, and then it really isn't much of a downtown if you just have a sea of parking lots and it's just, auto worry on it and that's the danger we're running into uh, because Walla Walla they're building up steam and I've gotten some calls already from people and, and they're still they're going to look at either Myra or 125 uh, so it isn't like we're losing them at all but right away it's like oh it's right by the cow it's right by the university so I want to put a big parking lot in it right in the front and put we have a real far setback and it's like that doesn't jive but because we don't have this on the books we can really say that all we want but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything because we can say oh pretty please don't do that but you know they own the property and we don't have stuff on the books then you're out of luck and the, and the thing is with that kind of development once someone does that it spreads like wildfire and then you end up like Cleveland Ohio where you have a bunch of parking lots and one building in like an eight block radius so <laughs> end up with Isaac's 
Yeah, I, I mean, I mean that really is the threat, uh, and I think now is our opportunity since the citizens invested so much money in giving this like up to a classical Main Street. I think we really need to take over the uh, ten yard yard line to to make sure uh, that this really stays like as a walkable downtown and that we don't let that opportunity escape us. And then we do turn into Isaacs because, uh, you know, no disrespect to Isaacs, but at least that at least that's like a neighborhood node. I yeah. think that wouldn't be good to have something like that. As like, if that was like downtown Walla Walla, for example, that's not great. Yeah, and I just bring up Isaacs because nobody walks up and down. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's oh, I know. I, I bike down there. I'm the only one biking on it. So, <laughs> and it's a scary ride to yeah, go yeah, down a there. And, yeah. and I've gotten flat Timidated. tires twice in the last two weeks going down there because, yeah, apparently they only have a street sweeper over there. <laughs> oh, man. I, yeah. But yeah, in this thing, it even goes into like what the street trees need to look like for future development, even like street furnishings. Because if new buildings are getting developed, you can require that in a development agreement if they're doing like significant like redevelopment, uh, such as like a bench or a bike rack or what have you. And then this map I find really interesting because this shows you, at least in their opinion, where all the major nodes are at along the street. So the major ones uh, are Rose, Whitman, 4th, 8th, and 12th. And then the secondary intersections are like C Street, 6th, 10th. And then, and then minor ones beyond that are like A and B Street, and then 9th, and then 13th. So it just shows you uh, where all the nodes are along here. And that gives you definitions on everything. Uh, yeah, your courtyard area is on the back page of this. So uh, is the best practice. So uh, yeah, that's really what this document is and make sure that we don't lose our uh, opportunity. I love it. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 and, I, and I want to run through this uh, commi commission because I think as we're doing a paradigm shift and redevelopment, there's some people where when you're trying to educate them on the subject matter, uh, they don't really want to listen to it as much, and they think that this is like government overreach or something. Uh, but but the fact of the matter is, with this kind of stuff, we aren't telling people what to do with property currently exists. It's just that if you're buying something, you're going to tear down something. Uh, really, with the amount of public money uh, both from the state and the locals put on Main Street folks should realize their return on investment yeah. yep okay yeah. so any further comments on that or? I was just wondering about you were talking about street furniture yeah. and furnishings and the bike racks and stuff and there is a 1% for art thing in here and it says encouraged yeah. Is that going to be required or is that just going to be encouraged? Encouraged. Yeah. Some cities have a requirement. Yeah. I, I think that would be something we would look at maybe if this matures into yeah. a bigger downtown. But to start, we don't want to be penalizing people. Uh, but I would say if we ever get to, like, for instance, what Moscow, Idaho has turned mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. uh, they have 1% for the art because, frankly, they have the capacity yeah, now right. where they can. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, if there's no comments on that... I'll go to the next item, and this is just something I want you to uh, look at for the next meeting, which is a home occupation uh, definition, because as you know, since we're going through the comprehensive plan process, uh, this is now when we're able to like update our development standards and things like that. And while I believe at the time when some of the definitions were crafted, uh, it was well intentioned to encourage some minor businesses and residential districts. We're now starting to see the flip side of that, where uh, folks are starting to, how should I say this, have uh, businesses that have quite a bit of traffic intensity. And while when you read the definition, it briefly goes into traffic, the problem is when you're approaching land use from a judicial perspective, just uh, saying, oh yeah, traffic, by what standard? Who? 
you can't no, enforce it. Yeah. And that's the problem, uh, is that we, we're starting to get quite a few bit of like service businesses where in, initially uh, when they file a state business license, it's, oh, we only have like one person and we'll drive up to our house and get supplies and leave. Uh, but then uh, as they're doing their business longer and longer, it goes from one truck up to four trucks and then one person to where there's eight people hauling toilets and shower heads. And and <coughs> Yeah, and from an attorney perspective, I asked if we could really enforce anything with our current definition, and it's like so open, frankly, uh, that we we for the most part we really can because there's like no standard associated to it at all. It says, oh, it won't really mess with traffic. Well, what is the measurement to it? Uh, so in board docs, I included just some uh, some demonstration ordinances from some uh, surrounding communities uh, that are in a similar that were in a similar boat and then fixed their definitions uh, and that's just something I want you to, uh, to look at and let me know what your thoughts are and I'm going to bring a, dra a draft definition in a later meeting it's just I don't want to surprise everyone with it I, I want you to uh, let me know if you have any concerns or stuff that we really should drill into and address with it. So uh, as I said here, we're thinking of trying to tighten up the definition to protect the quality of life of residential districts, but we don't want to be hostile with it, but it's just, you know, our the land use its own business is own business for a reason, and the residential zones likewise are zoned residential to be residential. Um, and the questions we want to consider is the traffic, the parking, the noise, essentially what is the standard uh, that we really want folks to abide by. Uh, uh, and ultimately, this is a planning commission decision like most comp plan stuff, but since this does have an economic development nexus to it, they want to open it up to this commission as far as what should be thrown into it because they know there's a problem. They're just trying to deal with it. Uh, and then the example of property is the one that I took a picture of over on B Street because uh, that's really what poked the bear because I've had a whole community group come in my office uh, screaming bloody murder right. about it. Uh, there, there is well, a... Anybody that has to travel the street. Yeah. I've done that. I was shocked the last time I went down yeah. there. I didn't realize it had gotten that bad. What, so, what, so, is, what is that? Yeah. Well, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a plumber, plumber business. He's oh. got like three or four trucks and he parks. And well, you, can, you can hardly get a car. Well, and, and not just that. He, he's also started to do general contracting. Uh, this fellow in question so it's starting to get to a point where there's like bulldozers and plumbing trucks and yeah. there's toilets out front and everything else. That, the, the street that you, that's just disappearing out yeah. there, there are times when he's got his trucks parked and that's one of those private streets that never should have happened. Sure. Yeah. And so it's narrow to begin with. And so once he parks in there, you, there's hardly room to get one car around there, let alone two-way traffic. So I so I showed this because we tried uh, barking up the tree of a legal remedy with this, and uh, as we got closer and closer, we realized we didn't have much of a leg of stand on because uh, of the whole home occupation issue, uh, which means we need to fix the home occupation yeah, issue. FYI, that address was supposed to be on auction on the courthouse steps oh. last Friday. And I don't know that it happened. There are people that are looking to purchase it just to get, you know, clean it up. Um, initially, when the bank puts those things on auction, lots of times they're way beyond reality and a, you know, a realistic price. Sometimes that takes a few months to get down to where the bank will finally accept something. But it may be going away yeah. because he hasn't paid his uh, mm. he hasn't paid mortgage now for a long time. Too long. Well, the the fact of the matter, this is one of the worst ones, but it's starting to become a more prevalent issue because people are realizing that they can do it. Well, yeah, because we we end up getting a complaint where evidently there's a guy who's dispatching taxi cabs out of a neighborhood, apparently. So he's got his fleet there? Yeah. There's actually a foot, and then there's another person uh, where we were able to somewhat deal with it from a code enforcement perspective. Uh, 
but he keeps like negating our code enforcement rules just enough where it's hard to get this person. But it's where he has a house and he's basically at times almost operating like a used car lot out of his front yard. And it's become, and as the months are going by, it's becoming a really like messed up issue. Uh, I've actually, we didn't really have this problem in Colfax, so I find it fascinating. <laughs> uh, yeah, but but I think what's happened is that Walla Walla has been tightening up their regulations and stuff, and I think now, much like everything else, when they do stuff like that, they're now looking over yeah. here uh, well, to see what will happen. Yeah. So well, I. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I've given you some de uh, demo ordinances, but we want to make this change soon because it's starting to get out of control. Yeah, you know, economic development doesn't just mean growth; it means development. Yeah. So you gotta, you know, you don't, you don't want to be hostile. But no. Then, and maybe not in this first one, but any thought and any, you know, thing that goes down on paper. If you can keep in mind, at some point you may have to get hostile. Yeah. You know, next next time, yep. or whatever. So that that needs to be taken into account. Yeah. Whether you know, okay, if, I don't know whether it's an if then or if there's violations that occur, you can act or whatever it is. Uh, because yeah, they won't leave yeah. until they have to. Well, and then what I think we may end up having to do, and we can talk about this at a later meeting after you look at the stuff I attach, because I'd be curious what your take on this is, but we're maybe even looking at maybe requiring a formal like home occupation license, uh -huh. where if you're going to do something like that, you actually have to go through a process, uh, because right now how it works is that basically as long as whoever is doing that has filed a business license with the state, um, that's it. Is it? No, there's like no. Well, that's it, what my question. Well, yeah, what is the zoning so, situation well, right now? Well, the the zone, like the zone in here, for instance, uh, that that's like a single family zone. Yeah. But but the way our home occupation definition reads is that as long as as long as it isn't really. Uh, dealing with uh, like traffic much or there aren't many people there at one time you're good but the problem is there's no standard to tie it back to so what is reasonable traffic to you maybe one car to someone else it could be two now, our, our other communities i think you know the business licensing you know because of course like when we register ours we you know you also register for the city college place license yeah or dno tax you know we've got all it is can all of that be levied on these Home-based businesses too. That is, that's something I can check on uh, to look into. Because yeah, that's the problem. Right now, we really don't know about this stuff until uh, people file a complaint uh, with us. Unfortunately, it's starting to come in at a pretty good pitch. Because it seems like people have figured out that gap. The fact that there is really no program here it's and that's how it's always been here it's just yeah. been if you do a home occupation file your state business license and until you irritate someone you're good to go pretty much <laughs> pretty much yeah 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 and it worked for years but yeah. now unfortunately uh seems not to be working anymore so well, there's always a few out there you know so, so yeah, please look at that information because the next meeting we'll have a deeper discussion because we need to do the tweak to it uh, really when the comp plan gets updated in June would be a good time. So any questions on that? Okay. Okay, well, that is really all I had for uh, tonight. So for the next meeting, just really take a look at the design regulations and let me know if you're good with the College Avenue design regulations because it would be good if we could uh, take action on that the next meeting. And then also uh, the thought about the home occupation definition. I'll yeah. come up with a draft of it, but right. I would just be curious what your thoughts